1928, a woman named Agnes Boya Jew decided to travel to Dublin to join the Sisters of Loretta there. And it was here that she took the name that we all know, Teresa, or later she'd be known as Mother Teresa. And what's interesting about Mother Teresa is that she had a call within a call. Uh, she pr professed her vows with the Sisters of Loretto and became a teacher and later a principal at St. Mary High School for Girls in uh, Calcutta. Um, but one day when she was on a train for a retreat, our Lord spoke to her saying, Abandon teaching to work in the slums of Calcutta, aiding the city's poorest and sickest people. And we all know that's what she did. After getting permission, she went to Calcutta and founded the Missionaries of Charity, whose mission was to aid the unwanted, the unloved, and the uncared for. Now, one thing a lot of us uh, didn't realize until after Mother Teresa passed away was that she went through a long period of darkness. I think it was about 50 years. And I was reading a Catholic website the other day, and uh, on it, the author pieced together a few lines from Mother Teresa's letters, and he came up with a spiritual canticle of sorts um, that describes this period of darkness that she went through. And these are her words. She said, I did not know that love could make one suffer so much of pain human, but caused by the divine. The more I want him, the less I am wanted. I want to love, love him as he has not been loved, and yet there is that separation, that terrible emptiness, that feeling of absence of God. They say people in hell suffer eternal pain because of the loss of God. In my soul, I feel just this terrible pain of loss, of God not wanting me, of God not being God, of God not really existing. That terrible longing keeps growing, and I feel as if something will break in me one day. Heaven from every side is closed. I feel like refusing God. Pray for me that I may not turn a Judas to Jesus in this painful darkness. She's someone who made a vow to never refuse Jesus anything, and she kept that vow throughout her life. But based on this explanation of her darkness, it seems like the only reward she got for her faithfulness to God was pain, suffering, abandonment, and feeling forgotten. Now, we may not all go through a darkness like Mother Teresa, but perhaps after months and years of faithfulness to God, we may wonder if he's paying attention. Sometimes it can seem like the, seem like the lights in heaven are off and God's taking a nap. I think it's kind of natural just for us as human beings to want to be recognized. We get recognition at work when we give our time and talent to help the company grow. But in our spiritual life, it can feel like our faith and our prayers oftentimes go unnoticed. And the real kicker to this, really the most difficult part, is that those that aren't as faithful to God or who do things for show, they seem to get more recognition for their lack of faithfulness, at least from others. And it kind of leaves us to think that maybe they've chosen the better path. And we see this in the gospel. So Jesus, at the beginning, he warns the crowds to beware of the scribes who go around in long robes and accept greetings in marketplaces and seats of honors in synagogues and places of honor at banquets. And then shortly after this, he directs the disciples' attention to the widow dropping the two coins into the treasury. Now, one thing that was common to do during Jesus' time, and I suppose it's still common today, was that those who were able and willing, they'd put something in the treasury for the maintenance of the priest, the poor, and the widows. Our gospel, it tells us that many rich people this day, they put in large sums. And so you can imagine these people, especially the Pharisees, they probably got a lot of recognition when they put that money in there. When people saw their donation, they probably praised them for their generosity and held them in high honor and esteem. And it kind of reminds me of a story I was told in seminary about St. Francis. When he went to Rome, um, he went to drop money in the collection, and he made, sh he made sure that he dropped it with some force so that people would hear it and recognize how much he was giving to the church. Um, but the widow in the gospel, she wouldn't have gotten the same attention that all these other people got. 
she threw in two coins, which wasn't worth much. And so she may have even gotten some dirty looks, them wondering uh, if that's all she's going to give because all these other people gave so much. Um, But like this widow, it can kind of seem that when we're generous, uh, giving all we have to God, it often goes unrewarded or we're rewarded with suffering, persecution and hardships. And from a worldview, we're doing it all wrong because all of this isn't a reward at all. But you may remember a couple weekends ago um, in the gospel, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He said that those that give up all for his sake receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. And what's interesting is that one of the blessings he promises is persecution. And then in the Gospel of John, after the Last Supper, Jesus tells his disciples that in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Brothers and sisters, part of being faithful and following Jesus means that we're also going to have to carry a cross like Jesus. And it can seem like he's far away when we're carrying our crosses. And the devil may tempt us to think that this whole thing is pointless, that we should give up our faith. And uh, he may even uh, make us think what good has come from our faithfulness to God. But if we return to our gospel today, we see that despite the hardships and lack of recognition by others, our faithfulness doesn't go unnoticed. Jesus is the one that draws the disciples' attention to the widow, and he tells them that her contribution was greater than all the others because she gave everything she had, her whole livelihood. To the one who has faith, and I would say especially to Mother Teresa, they begin to see that the trials and sufferings are the reward. They direct our attention to the crucified, Mother Teresa, uh, despite all the darkness and suffering that she went through, she once told a priest who was going through a dark night of his own that in you today, Jesus wants to relive his complete submission to his father. It doesn't matter what you feel, but what he feels in you. You and I must let him live in us and through us in the world. Through this emptiness, darkness, and the trials that we encounter in our life of faith, We're being grafted onto the life of Christ, and what he asks of us is to give our whole livelihood to him, our thoughts, our words, and our actions, and to really trust entirely in him and allow him to live in us and us in him. And it can seem like a scary thing, especially when we know that following Jesus means that it's going to be difficult sometimes. We'll be persecuted and have to suffer. But if we turn to our first reading, we see the promise made to a woman who put her trust in God. This widow in Zarephath, uh, she literally had nothing. She was down to her last bit of flour, and afterwards, her and her son were preparing to die. And so you can imagine she was probably pretty surprised and uh, a little disheartened when Elijah shows up telling her to give him some water and bread. And she explains her concern to him. But then comes the word of God from the mouth of Elijah. He says, the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry until the day when the Lord rains, sends rain upon the earth. And so we see here, brothers and sisters, that the word of God, it nullifies this woman's death sentence. And through Elijah, God provides this woman and her son with that daily bread until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. This story, it really shows us that God cares for those who love him and place their trust in him. And we may for a time have to suffer, be left in darkness and feel abandoned, but Our Lord, he never really abandons us, and we can never go unnoticed in his eyes. As someone once told me that God, he's never unaware of us, because even in the darkest night, when we feel most abandoned by God, he's there as a loving father holding us in existence. Our Lord's the one who sees us when no one else does. Like the widow in our first reading, he strengthens us and he nourishes us with the daily bread of the Eucharist. 
And he hopes that we'll begin to see the blessing in our trials and sufferings, that through them, God's making us like his son so that one day we can enjoy the eternal salvation he won for us in heaven.